Morning to you all out there. And um, why do we say good morning when evidently it's not? It's absolutely chucking it down with rain. It's really windy. Andy's just turned up. It's just gone 5.30 and we're heading off down to Eastbourne to have a go at fishing. Why I'm doing this, I really don't know. The bed this morning seemed a lot better. But uh, I'll catch up with you when I get down there. I'll see you down on the beach. So, welcome to another one of my videos. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know those mornings where you think, hmm, should have stayed in bed? Well, today is definitely one of them. The weather is absolutely rank. And Andy and I were going, oh no, we'll be okay. Bit of rain we can deal with, no wind. Well, the wind has just got up and up and up. We've been here about 20 minutes, just set up. Um, I'll show you in two shakes. But um, we're gonna give it a crack. High tides at 11.30. If I can keep like 30, 40 odd yards out there, even though the sea's quite big, uh, I'm gonna have a go. So do excuse the uh, rain noise behind me, but it's deluging like something out of the Bible but I'll show you what we're looking at. So that is the view outside of my bivy. I'd say those waves sloshing down onto the beach, they've got to be a good eight foot plus. Um, big, big tide today, which is another reason why we've come down here to try and uh, escape the tidal pool but I think it's going to be one of those days where we really struggle to um, hold out there and it is absolutely ridiculous I'm not going out there just yet and wait for this scroll to go through I've got a two hook scratching rig on here really short snoods size two hooks and I've got a Mark Williams pulley rig on here so pulley at the top with a fresh out worm and a bit of squid and then I've got a squid and mackerel wrap on a panel on the, uh, the bottom pulley. Um, you might ask why have I come out on a day like today? Well with all the cancer shenanigans that I've been dealing with I don't want to squander, not that I intend to keel over, but you kind of recognise and realise that every day is precious. I've got Andy with me today, he's the only one mad enough to come out all the others were using um, fairly descriptive Anglo-Saxon language as to the reasons why we shouldn't come out. So I'm going to bang this one out. Andy has just had a storming great bite on his... Uh, I've just seen it. That went out a lot further than I thought it was going to do. I wasn't really even bothering to lean into that. But I saw the bite on his line. It was going bonkers. What's he got? Oh, he's got bloody hell. <laughs> now... <laughs> It's unusual for Andy to walk towards me, but he is walking towards me, which means he has caught something good. And <laughs> I've got to show you. So, <laughs> I actually saw that bite. That was going absolutely bonkers. How long's that fish then, do you reckon? That's over 40 easily, isn't it? Yeah, decent bass. Bloody hell. Look at that. Yeah. Right, we've got to get a photo. That makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> It's lucky you can't hear what he's saying. <laughs> Brilliant. This will give you some sort of perspective as to just how big the sea is at the moment. 
it's a long time since I fished and see this wild and woolly. Um, we've had to move back several times now. The tide line, well the last tide line's a bit lower, but the swells are so big it's just kicking it up the beach. I am going to cast this one out because Andy's got his out. His rod. <laughs> Anyway, a juvenile joke for a three-year-old man who needs to grow up. So, scratching rig, short snoods, not clipped down, fresh out, and half top hook, half bottom hook, tipped off with squid. God, it's difficult to focus when it's like this. Absolutely minging. Right. So, tide's going that way. Andy's way up of me, so we're not going to get caught. This um, vast jacket is. Uh, I've tried and tried and tried to get something that's waterproof and this is properly, properly waterproof. All my other jackets after about two hours in this sort of rain, um, they uh, start leaking at the sort of elbows and all the bits that you're rubbing. But this is waterproof, windproof, really warm and it's properly waterproof. Um, hood's a bit of a nose to get on with but most hoods are I have to say. So. Um, yeah, I've had the rods out about five minutes. Uh, I am glad I've actually come down here. I was listening to the rain like all through the night thinking, you know what, do I really want to get up at 4.30? Probably not. But I did promise a few of you out there that I'd come and I didn't want to let you down. So I'm here. Um, week's been, yeah, another week of just normal in and out of the hospital bit of work in between. For those of you who are looking at figuring out where this is, the Billy's Tower just here, which is about probably 200 metres away, and then the bungalows just up here, they're about 200 metres away. And you can park just down, if you get early enough, you can park down on the, uh, the road. Um, not many people out, unsurprisingly. But yeah, week's been pretty pretty ordinary I have to say. I did have one uh, funny um, event. I was sitting in hospital so I'd booked myself in for more nasty stuff which I won't bore you with and I wasn't really looking forward to it so I'm trying to kind of divert my mind and I'm on right at the back of the room, three seats, I'm on the outside seat, middle seat empty, bloke sitting here um, whose wife had gone off or girlfriend had gone off to do stuff. He had a big beard and Viking tattoos all over him. I've got a medium sized beard. And then a lady comes in pushing a wheelchair and she wheels the wheelchair into the slot. So the lady is facing me in the wheelchair and then I think it was the lady's daughter, well I'm sure it was because she kept calling her mum, <laughs> sat down um, and did the usual British, you don't mind if we sit here? Well no, there's no one there. Anyway, they chit chat, chit chat and the old woman's phone rings and it's Elvis singing his heart out <laughs> and the daughter goes, Mum, switch your phone off like this and the, the, the mum goes, no, somebody important might want to get me and the daughter goes, well who? Who's going to be ringing you? Well you never know, the mother goes and she had a really broad Scottish accent and then she's talking about the universe and the world in a really com completely politically incorrect way um, looking at the audience and saying things like, she's eaten too much, loudly. Anyway, chit chat, chit chat, then she's going, there's a tramp who keeps walking past my house. Disgusting, she goes, disgusting man, like this. And uh, she goes, he's, he's got a beard. I've always said that people who have beards, you can't trust them. They're scruffy and underhand, like that. Anyway, I'm thinking, oh dear, I've got a bit of a beard going on. Anyway, I look at the Viking next to me and I go, are you scruffy? Like mouthing the words? And he went, no, 
And he looks at me and he goes, your beard's okay, like that. I go, yeah. Anyway, the mother, or the daughter, then goes, mum, you can't say that. Do you realise these two gentlemen have beards? And then the Scottish lady went, I'm ignoring them. <laughs> I thought, you misery. Anyway, that was the highlight of my week until today, standing out in this, I was going to say Arctic conditions, but it's not really, it's more monsoonal. I don't know if that's a word. Anyway, I'm going to stop yattering. I'm going to watch my rods and I'm going to go and drink soup. And I really, really, really hope I catch a fish. I can't let Andy beat me again. But as you know, those who watch my videos, it's rare I catch anything. So yeah, at least I'm down here. I've got fresh bait. It's in the sea. That's the start. Uh, I just want to give a big shout out to Gethin. Um, Gethin is a young man who I think he was, when I asked his age, he was 10. And uh, he's obsessed about sea fishing, just got into it. So this one's for you, Gethin. Um, I know you're going fishing tomorrow with your dad. The weather's not going to be, you think today's bad. Tomorrow's going to be even worse. You're going to need your waterproofs. But I wish you luck, fellow. Um, I really, really, really do. So we're at the top of the tide. No bites. Andy's big bass. Well, even if you had a bite, you're not going to see it particularly. The wind is absolutely howling now, but the rain stopped. So we've swapped the wind for the rain. How I'm going to get this out there in this wind, but we'll try. Bloody hell. Where that went to. Oh, reasonably straight, sort of. <laughs> so there's me saying I hadn't had any bites. I've just had a storming bite and this chap has very generously come along and kindly joined the party. So well chuffed with that. <laughs> bait. Andy reckons this is bait. I suppose this is a third the size of his, but it's still a fish. <laughs> well chuffed. Oh, right, it's now become completely unfishable. The wind is absolutely screaming through here. It's pushing the sea up. It's full of weed. Um, you cast out, you get 80 yards out, big bow in the line, and then it just gets pulled all the way around. There's a groin down here. Andy's already got stuck on a groin up there. Um, sea's absolutely massive. I mean, I've moved now three times, and it's still splashing up on the... Uh, edge of the bivvy and then these massive squalls keep going through. So I'm going to go and drink beer with Andy. We're going to stop at a pub and uh, get ourselves a pint. So I didn't do bad today just for a change. <laughs> it, yeah, surprised myself. Um, and uh, I'm glad I made the effort. So I'll see you on the next one. And big, big, big thanks to all the really nice um, supportive comments that I've had from everyone out there about my uh, um, medical uh, issues that I've had of late. It really means an awful lot to me, I have to say. kind of lifts me through and gives me a reason for kind of continuing on. So um, without getting uh, too maudlin and uh, stupid, um, you look after yourselves. I'm going out again next week. I was going to say hella high water, but the weather's not looking that good next week, 40 mile an hour winds, but we'll see. So I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.